Hey, I'm Spectre Ball. I'm a gothic musician and also an occultist, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Iblis Gens. Before we do that, consider subscribing, clicking that notification bell to be alerted when a new video is available. I'm going to be making more videos about gens, so make sure you tune in every week. Gens. I thought the Goetia, the spirits of the Goetia, were some form of jinn, but I'm starting to think that that is not true. That Solomon used jinns to build his temple. And I found that fascinating. I was thinking about what is the connection between the Goetic spirits and also the jinns. And I am still trying to figure that out. But this video is about Iblis, the king of the jinns, the Satan or Shatan of Islam. Now, from what I understand, there are many different types of jinns. They live in caves, they live in dark dwellings, they live in garbage. And they were born from smokeless fire. Now, it seems like the jinns are chaotic. There are some evil jinns and some good jinns. I have not experienced much of these different types of jinns, but I am going to be looking forward to working with them. I decided that I'm going to be working with the king of the jinns, Iblis. Now here's a bit about Iblis. At the creation of humanity, God ordered all his angels to bow down in obedience before Adam. Iblis refused, claiming since he was created of fire whereas human beings came only of clay. I decided to go meet Iblis. And I asked Lamastu for help. Lamastu is wonderful at dealing with this, and I felt that she would be perfect in helping me to introduce myself to Iblis. I did not want to do this alone, because first, I did not know the energy, I did, know how, I did not know how I'm going to react, and I also did not know what is going to happen. So, as I contacted Lamastu, I was ready to astrally travel to Iblis. First, I saw a red desert. As I went into the desert, it got hotter and hotter. The deeper I went into the desert, the hotter it got. Then I started going into the desert, and I mean going into the sand, just like quicksand. Everything got dark, to the point that I could not see anything. Then I started seeing fire. I started seeing shadows, shadows upon shadows upon shadows. I did not want to expect anything. When I do new types of magic, I make sure I read a little bit and then I go do the work. So I have a very clear vision of what is presented before me. So as I am in the dark, I start seeing fire. I start feeling fire. Now, this is all happening in the astral and I have a Lamastu right next to me. All of a sudden, I see a man in a hat. I see a man in a cloak and I see him on a throne. His eyes are black. His eyes look like the abyss. He has somewhat dark skin with an orange tone to it. And he is silent. I go up to him, but as I go up to him, all I see in my mind is his face. I see those black eyes. And I told Iblis, I came here to meet you and to just get to know you. Of course, he asked why. Now, any human would ask why. So, what's the difference if a spirit does that too? And again, I repeated that I want to get to know you. So, as I am talking to Iblis, I start feeling very strange. I feel like my heart's going to go through my chest. I feel very uneasy and very uncomfortable. 
The energy is very strong. I feel that the energy is pulling me down. It feels very, very heavy while I am talking to Iblis. I did not want to stay long in this ritual because of how I was experiencing this. But I asked Iblis, how would he like to be called? Shatan or Iblis? And he says, I prefer Iblis. I do not prefer Shatan. And I felt a sadness in Iblis. I felt a disappointment in Iblis. I kind of had empathy for Iblis, but the experience was a bit overwhelming and it was one of the strongest experience I had in magic. I've been doing magic a very, very long time. And I felt that this was really, really strong. One of the strongest experiences that I ever had. So I decided that I will close down the ritual because I want to get to know Iblis more and see if there's anything and see if anything changes. So I thanked Iblis. He told me I could come back anytime I wish and I left. I do feel that if Lamastu was not with me, it would have turned out very, very bad. It's like somebody knocking at your door and you don't know them. You need to be careful. So I do feel that spirits are the same. I've said that in previous videos and I'm saying that now. That's why it's very important to get a spirit that you really know well and ask the spirit to introduce you to a new spirit. That way everything is much easier. Now, after the ritual was done, I had to lay down. And boy, did the energy rush through me. I couldn't get Iblis' face out all night. He was in my head constantly. I actually had to get up and banish the room because he just wouldn't leave. <laughs> so if this happens to you, I feel banishment is good. But make sure that you let the spirit know I am going to banish the room if you don't leave. But I also thought about that maybe it's some residue from the work with Iblis. Now, then, about two days later, I contacted Iblis again, alone, without Lamastu. And he was very different. He was dressed in gold. He was dressed with a golden crown. And he seemed calm and very very relaxed that's the way he presented himself to me and he felt very king-like like a king it did not feel like a jinn it felt very different so it makes me wonder about what do jinns have to do with kings and if Iblis was a king before a jinn but i will let you know when i find out so i hope that gave you some good information and if you work with jinns, please put that down in the comment section because we are all learning. I will see you in the next video.